Um, okay. Jelani Day. What can you share with me? I can share with you that um, it is still an open and active investigation, that it is a death investigation to this point. Um, As opposed to? Um, you, you could call it a crime, you could call it something else, but we just don't have any factual information to say that it is anything other than a suspicious death at this point. Um, you know, we've... We've put in a lot of man hours to try to find out what happened to him. Um, the, the hard part with the case is it's spread across the state. You know, it started in Bloomington. He was missing from Bloomington. He's from Decatur, too, right? He's from... No, I'm sorry. Uh, Dan Danville. Sorry, yeah, Danville. he's from Danville. He was going to school at ISU. Um, he was only there for a couple of weeks um, for the, his um, speech pathology uh, master's program. Um, I can share that he was missing from Bloomington. Last time anybody saw him was at you know nine twenty in the morning on that Tuesday. Was that at the uh, cannabis shop? Beyond Hello. Yep. And then you know we found his car two days later in the ravine by area the YMCA. by the YMCA. Um, his car was found in Peru, and his lanyard was found in Peru. Uh, everything else, there's nothing else that was found in Peru. His body was not found in Peru. His body was not. His body was located in an unincorporated part of LaSalle County, not in Peru. It would be just to the south of Peru's jurisdiction, across the shore. Mm -hmm. What bridge would it have been near? 251, but not incorporated in Peru. Correct. Yeah, okay. Because when Jesse Jackson and the crew were here uh, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. they had the uh, they rallied down at that point uh, near Mays, I remember. Because that was the understanding of where he was found. It was across, it was across the, the river, river from that, which is unincorporated. South, yep, on the south side. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so you're dealing with multiple police agencies, and I imagine state police, and uh, is, are the, the, the federal officers declined to participate, didn't they? So they cannot take part in the investigation as far as talking to people, taking over the investigation, or those types of things, because there's no federal nexus. There's nothing that connects this to be a federal anything, um, which has been explained numerous times. But the mother still thinks the FBI should be involved. I've asked the FBI to take the case. They've declined because they can't federally. Federal law prohibits them from doing so. What they can do is they can... <laughs> and help with any services we may want, So, and they have. So we have evidence at their, you know, regional computer lab um, in Chicago. We have um, used their victim services. We have used um, their evidence tech has come and taken sent samples from the car. We've done a lot of different things with the FBI. I'm in contact with the FBI, you know, they're always saying, is there anything else we can do? Is there anything you need? Um, we've sent things to Quantico to get further analysis to see if there can be any more. Um, but that Quantico being just for the clarification of the listeners and the viewers, the, the FBI's training facility or headquarters. Their headquarters, their, headquarters, their main right? headquarters. Yes, yeah, so that's something in the district. But Quantico is where a lot of them are, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so Quantico is where where their main headquarters mm -hmm. is, and that's where a lot of their um, more, I guess, superior lab type things can take place. Well, Chief, um, hmm, um, so if, if Jelani Day's body was not found in Peru and it was found in unincorporated LaSalle County, I mean, who's in charge of the investigation? So the problem has always been everybody's wanted somebody to take the case, and it's just not possible when you have that many entities, which is why the task force was created. And you created the task force. Yeah. So the task force was created. Um, the LaSalle County Sheriff's Office was called when the body was located. Uh, because that's technically their jurisdiction, which is how they entered into the case. Um, you know, his clothing was found in the city of LaSalle. He and his wallet was found in the city of LaSalle. You know, so that's how they're incorporated into the case. The state police came on board just to assist. Um, so they are, they have assisted. Uh, Bloomington Police Department is obviously part of it. And, um, and then us. And so... Creating the task force and having the meetings here, um, you know. That's sort of 
presented you as the lead agency in this whole thing, basically. You took the initiative. Correct, and that's why so you're getting, people think that yeah. we are the lead agency. Hey, so you took the initiative in creating yeah. the yeah. task force, correct. But so, so now you're, you guys are on the hook. And we're on the hook, yeah. And, and you know, we've done a major part of the investigation. Uh, Bloomington Police Department's done a major part of the investigation. Um, you know, everybody else's the auxiliary part. Early on, we, we had tasks, task lists, and everybody was tasked with things. We'd have tips come in. Everybody was tasked with that. We just don't have any of that anymore. We've never had anybody come forward and say anything. We've never had anybody with a tip that panned out to be anything. Um, and, and there's a $10,000 reward from the FBI to call the tip line. Um, there's just... What else is needed? What do you need right now to break this thing? You know, you almost need a witness, eyewitness. I, I don't know what else, how else to to break it or... I mean, does the task force go on indefinitely or... I mean, until there's absolutely no more leads, yeah. We're still waiting on a few things, trying to break into his phone. That's been a while. What's yeah, going on with that? There's no brute force that supports the operating system on his phone right now, so we can't break into it. Um, when that when that comes out, when that software comes out, and so right now, hook it up and is try to go through it. Explain to me how the task force works. Is it meeting regularly still? Not not as regularly. Uh, we still communicate with each other. Uh, we met in October. I think it's the last time we might have met. Um, as one big group, I talk to those investigators all the time. However, uh, you know, anything that comes about or, you know, we, we've talked after the Monday council meeting, we all talked, you know, to see really, is there anything else? What are we missing? What can we do? So if somebody's interviewing friends and associates, but that's other police departments. In as, other words, I mean, just chasing it down day to day. Is there any day to day work being done anymore on it? I guess I'm saying, I mean, you're the task force, but you're leading it, but is, is Jelani Day's mother right in the worrying that this thing is not going to be solved? I am not real confident in it being solved as far as what happened to him. Um, just in the, f the case that we have now and the facts that we have now. If something else comes out and it breaks, then I mean, I mean, we are not not doing anything. We are we are always talking about it. We are always looking at it. We are always questioning each other about it. We're always you know doing something. Is it daily? No. She's right that I hadn't talked to her since whatever date she said, um, and that was because my last correspondence with her was uh, you know that we if anything else. If there's any other questions you have, let me know. Or if you have um, any other information that we come across, or anything you need to know, we'll let you know. Um, so, I mean, that can't go on indefinitely. It could. There's cold cases out there from forever, though. You know, so that's not what I want. It's not an acceptable answer for you. Correct. Not at all. It's not acceptable. It's not for her either. I want nothing more than to find out what happened to her son. Nothing more. And it's a real fear of mine that I could have my career and never have that answer. But I'm not going to stop trying to find that answer, ever. I mean, there's been people retired that were on the task force now, you know, as these things go on and on, maybe fresh eyes looking at it every now and again could help. You know, we've seen it for so long and the same things. And I imagine that's a frustration. We'll wrap it up here. But I imagine that's a frustration most police officers have is there's something when they retire that they tried so hard to do and couldn't get them. Yeah, that is my biggest fear in this in this whole case because I have, you know, I've spent a lot of time on this case. Not I mean, me personally, but everybody else has too. But, you know, I have an investment in it, you know, and I, I want to know what happened for his mother. I want to know what happened for her in a bad way. And she might be mad at me right now and she might be mad at everybody involved and I get that. I get it because she lost her son and that's not fair. But I'm not stopped trying to find out what happened to him. Chief, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it and congratulations and welcome. Thank Good you. Good luck to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. <laughs>